The late Daniel Toroitich Arap Moi is Kenya's second president who led the country for nearly a quarter of a century from 1978 to 2002, a record 24 years, making him the longest serving president in Kenya. Tawala Kenya, Tawala, Tawala Kenya, Tawala, Raisi Moi, Tawala Kenya, Tawala, Tawala Kenya, Tawala, Tawala Kenya, Tawala, Raisi Moi, Tawala Kenya, Tawala, Unaongoza Viema, Unaongoza Viema, Raisi Moi, Unaongoza Viema, Peleka Kenya. Moi was born on 2nd September in Kuriengwa village, Sacho, Baringo County. It was said he was a hearts boy as per Tugen culture, whose heart was somewhere and not in herding livestock. When missionaries arrived in the region and asked that each family offers a child to be educated, his family offered Moi. It is at the Kabartonjo Mission School where he acquired the name Daniel after baptism, having been born to Roitich Arab Moi. Educated at mission and government schools, Moi became a teacher at the age of 21. His last posting in education was assistant principal of Tambach Teachers College before his course changed. In 1955, he was selected to join the Legislative Council, LEGCO, as a representative for Rift Valley region. Moses Mudavadi, father to ANC party leader Wycliffe Musalia Mudavadi, was area education officer who conducted interviews to select a representative for Rift Valley. There was an interview uh, that was being conducted. Um, for those who might fit the bill. Um, and it was not easy, so uh, there's, there's a story of a chief uh, who then went and whispered to my father that, uh, you know, since there are no other people, have you tried so-and-so? He's a teacher in, uh, in uh, this part of the world. Uh, and as time was going, uh, he actually then said, let us go and fetch that person to also come and uh, be interviewed. Uh, and when he was interviewed, uh, they say they went and found uh, when he was not prepared. He was actually in, in, in an outfit where he had been going through the teaching sessions, uh, the physical education and all that. And he wanted to go and freshen up and they told him, don't worry, let's just go. So he went and when they did the interview, um, uh, they forwarded his name and that is how he, he then became that legislator and that was his journey into politics. I was uh, a young boy uh, in the 50s, that was 1958, uh, one year after the first elections when Africans were elected to the then Legico. Uh, and my father had invited the eight, the first eight members to our home in, in Bondo. And Moi was one of them. Uh, they came together. There was Tom Boyer, there was Lawrence Oguda, Masinde Muliro, Ronald Ngala, uh, Nzao Muimi, uh, Bernard Mate, uh, and, and, and Daniel to a teacher of Moi. So they came to Bondo, and Yeramogi was introducing them to the crowd in our home. Uh, and he gave them different uh, kind of uh, 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 side names. Uh, like Kangara was the, the uh, as a baby hippo, uh, and Muliro was uh, fire, and uh, Tom Boyer was Boya was a rabid dog, and uh, uh, Oguda was a, a black dog, and Moi was a giraffe, uh, and so on and so forth. That was my first encounter with Daniel Tretichirap Moi. As a member of Kadu, 
He was appointed Minister for Education in 1963 transition period and a year later in 1964 he joined Kanu and was appointed Minister for Home Affairs. Three years later in 1967, Daniel Toritich Arap Moy was named Kenya's third vice president, a position he served until 1978 when Kenya's founding father, President Mze Jomo Kenyatta, died while in office. Moi was sworn in as president to lead the country on interim basis until October the same year, when he was eventually sworn in as substantive president. <laughs> His elevation to the presidency caught many by surprise, particularly those who had angled themselves to succeed Mze Kenyatta. And when Moi took charge, he was quickly dismissed and referred to as a passing cloud. For about four years, Plots were hatched to dislodge him from power, whose climax was the night of August 1st, 1982, the attempted coup that was staged by a section of Kenya Air Force soldiers. With the help of loyal Kenya Army forces led by General Mahmoud Mohammed, the coup was scuttled in less than 12 hours. Veteran broadcaster Leonard Mambombotela was the one mutineering soldiers went for, ordering him to make the coup d'etat announcement. Mimi ni kaina kwa li jamaa, walikuwa kama kumi hivi, katika Land Rover moja, ni kaikuwa katikati. Where we going to end our pesa, man, don't ask us man, any question. Utajua ukumbele. So tukaenda mpaka wapi, mpaka studio. Yes. Kiswahili service. Yes. Hapo sasa kuingia ndani mwana, hakuna mtu mipeke yangu tu. <laughs> Yule kiongozi kumbi alikuwa kuwa ndiye mwenyewe, uchuka izakayo, uchuka ndiye alikuwa kuwa kiongozi waku. <laughs> And he told me quite frankly, I can remember him in the Chuka and Gambia, Sasa, I can dick and dick up of it or a caraca. Say my, so my income, and you use armed one. And there were about ten of them in the studio. You can say my name in Leonard Mambo Motel, Natangaza, Vileo, Comba, Sarikari, or more European Rio, Kyongos, what I for Sasa, and he has a Chuka, Natangaza, Okuna Mogadia. Ah, Mahmoud Al Kujam Bioman, and he knew me. <laughs> He called me by my name. Leonard, come here, sir. In Gian Dani Maramoja. When I saw Sarika, it's not me, sir. You could miss your Kundu. You can be okay. Tell us that everything is on. Sasani Kanza Tena. Miss Kirizagi. Mimi Tena Leonard Mambo Motela. Yule Yule Aliwambia Kwamba. Sarika, we may be in Rio. Mimi Mimi Tena. Naisema Kwamba. Kila kitu sasa wa serikali ya moi naendelea na baba moi yuko tika madaraka na hapa niko na general Mahmoud Mohamed na wenzake wa jeshi ya nchikavu amba wa mikuja kuwa kwa serikali. Basi ni katangaza, 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 1982, when there was a proposal to form another party, then there was this rush to parliament to uh, make the country a de jure a single party. Uh, that uh, marks the beginning of the underground resistance uh, to the Moi re regime. And that caused, of course, untold suffering for quite a number of, of Kenyans. Many people, like including yours truly. The second president of the republic had surmounted his first major hurdle which ushered in a challenging and perhaps most difficult period for him. In April 1982, Parliament had resolved that Kenya becomes a one-party state by law. However, calls for multi-party democracy began and were punctuated with political violence. Those pushing for the cause believed it was their right, but on the other hand, 
by law the country was a one party state during this period the country was in financial turmoil as the donor community withdrew funding aid to Kenya in a bid to untwist the nation to allow multipartism. So many banks had to eventually suffer and the financial markets were in, a, in turmoil. Um, inflation uh, was extremely high. Um, uh, we had no foreign exchange to even meet our obligations. Um, so clearly, uh, that was another crisis. Uh, so you had the political, and then you had the, uh, the, the, the this financial. And then the donors had walked out on Kenya. Uh, and then the civil society was extremely vibrant and well-funded uh, at that time. So clearly then Moy had a crisis on his hands. In 1991, President Moi led his ruling party Kanu in repealing Section 2A of the Constitution, effectively opening up the country for multi-party democracy. This was the second major historic event in his leadership. Tufungwe section hiyo, na nauliza nyinyi nyote kukaa na mimi, tuende barabara yetu, tukiwa Kanu pamoja. But then when the time came, when the pressure was being mounted, when we formed a Ford as a pressure group and put on pressure, and the wind of change was blowing across the developing world, uh, Moi saw it like Mwalimu Nyerere in Tanzania and embraced the change and uh, gave instructions to his um, delegates, the Kanu delegates, to repeal Section 2A uh, to allow for formation of other political parties. But when things came to a crunch, he personally, and I know this because all the crowd around him were against his conceding to the change of the constitution, he acceded to the removal of Section 2A and ushered in multipartism. The country again stabilized and we moved to a new level. In December 1992, he won the first multi-party election against opposition parties and it was the same case in 1997 when he emerged victorious for his final term that would run until December 2002. During his 24-year reign, education tops as Moi's biggest legacy owing to the number of schools he established and supported colleges and universities as well. He was a sportsman and it was in his tenure that Kenya's main stadia, the Nyayo and Mo International Sports Center Kasarani were constructed in 1983 and 1987 respectively. He was a regular whenever Kenya's national soccer team Harambe Stars played. Under his administration, he strived to empower women. Former Senator Zipora Kitonyi was the chair of the Maendeleo Yawane Wake organization. Mze had a near and he had a passion for women. So when during my leadership, whenever we took any issue to him, he would listen and he would immediately act. We did not have to delay. If you remember, there was one time he appointed 15 women to the parastatals. The first woman to be appointed minister was during our time, going to Beijing, that's Niva Mwendo. And because we went to Mzee and we told Mzee, we are not going to go to Beijing with the man minister. And he acted, he gave us Niva Mwendo. And so he had a near and he had a passion, and that is how he gave children milk, because he loved children and their mothers. She says as a head of state and government, Moi had a vast and elaborate network for gathering intelligence. He had his network. When I talk of network, he would get the 
security briefings every morning. I remember waking up at five in the morning, calling me to state house, and he asked me, how is mama? What's happening in Kuala with Mama Lima Chivumbe, the late? I said, I look lost. And I said, Mse, I don't know. Mse already had the information. He had a way of getting his information. He had an immense network of the NSIS as well as his own trusted lieutenants throughout the country. Karibu zote alikuwa na sababu mimi sijui tumeenda kila mahali. Manake ni mzee ambaye alikuwa kai mahali pamoja yule. Ah, alikuwa anatembea sana. Alikuwa anatembea kila wiki yuko machako, yuko Kitui, yuko Samburu na kote huko mimi nilikuwa naenda. As a champion for cohesion and integration as per his philosophy of peace, love and unity. In his last Jamhuri Day celebration, President Moy extended an olive branch to all and sundry. Wale wanao singatia kuongoza musiweke Kenya chini. Musiweke msingi wa siasa zenu kwa chuki. Kama yuko mtu ametukana mimi na msamee Na kama yuko mtu ambaye nimesema chochote ambacho kimemuisa roho yake unisamee December 2002 general election heralded a new dawn for Kenya becoming Moi's third and final historic chapter The independence kanu that had speared the nation for 39 years handed over power to NAC an opposition coalition that had swept its way to power. Mwai Kibaki had won. Kanu's presidential candidate Uhuru Kenyatta conceded defeat way before the official election results were announced. I accept the choice of the people and in particular now concede that Mr. Mwai Kibaki will be the third president of the Republic of Kenya. Amid enthusiasm, chaos and confusion that marred Uhuru Park grounds, Moi's determination to peacefully hand over a united country to his successor Emilio Mwaikibaki was resolute. Unaccompanied by his trusted men and women, he braved the hostile crowd and handed over power. Moi took it calmly because I can talk specifically to the, about the day that he went to, to Uhuru Park. And uh, there he, he told us uh, that he would rather go alone uh, because uh, the mood uh, was such that um, it would be, it is chaotic um, and he cannot guarantee uh, that there will be order and the treatment that uh, other people around him would receive under such circumstances. Given how African countries were behaving in the geopolitics of the continent, he would very well have caused a fracas and a rampas in the country by refusing to hand over power to President Kibaki. He gracefully walked into Uhuru Park. You notice that it was not the normal handing over, uh, in what should have been even a proper parade uh, mounted uh, for him to do his final parade and then to in, uh, uh, formally hand over to the other one. It was, uh, it was very chaotic. We wanted to have a very um, orderly transition and handing over power. Uh, Moye apparently also had made this kind of arrangement, but there was a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure, people fearing that maybe the military might be used, uh, maybe some people might be arrested or assassinated. 
because this was really the first transfer of power by a, a living president to another. Because Kenyatta died in office. Uh, so Kenyans did not know how this kind of transition should be organized. Nilisema mako hati sayi na nani kwamba nita chiuzulu ama nita stahafu kibindi hiki cha miaka mitano ikisha. Wengine hawa kwa amini kwa sababu wana amini power katika kondinendi la Afrika kwa maguna muta naweza kuwacha power ya uraisi. Pawa iko kwa wananchi. Na sisi tu ni wathamini yao. On 30th December 2002, after handing over power, he left for his Kabarak home where he led a quiet life and attending church, family and other social gatherings except in 2005 when he came from retirement and joined forces with those opposed to a draft constitution which they believed wasn't good for the country at that time. As they say, a fruit never falls far from the tree. His two sons inherited his political boots and are members of parliament. His second-born son, Raymond Kipruto Moy, is serving a second term in the National Assembly as member of parliament for Rongai constituency, while his youngest son and Kanu chairman, Gideon Kipsiele Towet Moy, is also on his second term as senator for Baringo County, having also served as a member of the National Assembly for Baringo Central constituency after 2002 election, taking over from Ze Moi. Duncan Hemba, KTN News.